It's rare that I get a first-time guest, or it's not often, I'll say, that somebody stops by for the first time. But I was previously on the Cracked Skull podcast, thanks to Ted Coleman. Appreciate the invite. But one of the Cracked Skull's founding fathers, Corey, is coming over, and we are going to talk about Demolition Man, the 1993 movie. After the open rolls, he'll be here and we will discuss it. Corey, thank you for coming. No problem. Thank you for having me. And tell the viewers about your Cracked Skull podcast. So we are a, a trio, three friends, um, me and Ted being cousins. So there's a family dynamic there. Um, but it's, as the line says when we first started, it's whiskey, laughter, and bullshit. So <laughs> we come up with stuff that kind of goes in, in touch with what we're drinking. Um, like not too long ago, we had a going down the rabbit hole episode where we actually drank rabbit hole whiskey. That so, so fun. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So it was, it was good uh, conspiracy theories. Well, yeah, we did, and that's so. a, uh, I mean, that's just a great title. Yeah. It's, uh, it's actually the, the, the name of the first episode of Stephen King's miniseries. Okay. 112263, The yeah. Rabbit Hole. So, yeah, I, I think that's a lot of fun. The last one we just released was Taylor Swift and Green Jelly. <laughs> so, <laughs> we had a guest on for that, and it was a good episode. Oh, my so. goodness, yeah. It's <laughs> it's always fun trying to come up with ways to make a video appealing. Yeah, trying to bring the audience in. Yeah, and, I mean, Taylor Swift, it's, it's hard to beat. Uh, <laughs> She's all over the place right now. That's exactly right. So. I, I heard rumors she might be on the cover of the next Madden. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're covering her so Mom's much. Casey. <laughs> exactly, yeah, they're covering her so much on the NFL that uh, that she might get the next cover. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was... Which will be a curse, too, because they will throw a song about it. <laughs> After write a song about mm -hmm. it like that. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, so, uh, like I said before the open rolled, uh, Ted and Corey, Tony also, had me on their podcast, and on that day... You got wasted. Well, not just that, but I I told all three guys, I was like, oh, you can come by the channel anytime that you want. And so me and Corey, we were talking, and his movie of choice was 90s or mm -hmm. 80s action. Yep. So I kept having this this movie come up in conversation with with the, the, the regulars on the channel, that being Demolition Man. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, hey, Corey, you feel like uh, hopping on here and talking oh, yeah. about the uh, the 1993, you know, fun action film. And so that's why he came over. So I, I don't know. I just have such positive memories yeah, of, of this film. I, I always go back and rewatch things. I don't, I don't go by my memory because mm -hmm. what if I'm, what if my mind's lying to me? Right. <laughs> but uh, it. It didn't. It was still a lot of fun. I mean, Wesley Snipes and Sylvester Stallone are, I mean, they're just that. They're fun. I, I miss seeing Wesley Snipes in, in starring roles. And, right. And even to this day, I think Sylvester Stallone He can make is, a big comeback right that's now. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, he's he's money when it comes to um, bankability. Like, mm -hmm. I see his name on the marquee. Even there's a, a documentary out now on Netflix called Sly. I haven't I haven't popped it on yet, I but I yet. keep I keep hearing that oh man it's good it's good like I I got friends that I knew from my army days hitting me up saying how inspiring it was because Stallone talks about how he makes um stories about hope you know mm -hmm. and and putting over heroes right. and I was just like man that's 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 what it's all about is relatability when it comes to the hero and that's oh my goodness that's something that Stallone's character John Spartan has in spades especially in the modern age I feel oh, like yeah. he's he's even more relatable now than or at least to me I think mm -hmm. he's more relatable now than he was possibly in 96 when the movie came out because I mean I was a kid so I was a freshman in high school freshman in high school okay yeah. so well I'll ask you because mm -hmm. in 96 I, I was not in high school 
Uh, do you feel as though that things were so? Oh, you can't say that. You can't talk about that. Oh, that's a that's a no-no. no. No. Yeah, I, I felt like I felt like that's more relatable. You got now. way more stuff than than cool. you would now. So. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, but I just wanted your opinion because mm-hmm. uh, that's what I find so amusing about their future. Uh, what year is it? Twenty twenty three. Uh, twenty thirty two. Right? Yeah. We're coming up on that. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be long. Yeah, that's the funny thing. But yeah, so uh, twenty thirty two is is the time that the, the movie takes place in the future. When it when it starts, it's in nineteen ninety six. Yeah. But yeah, it's funny because I feel like in twenty twenty three the movie or real life wants to be like the movie's twenty thirty two. It's, it's heading that way. With, with the, things going. That's with, the way they're going. With the big no no times. Yeah. Uh now granted we don't have uh machines or AI out there mm. giving you the ticket, but on social media they like to tell you that Keep quiet and go away. Oh yeah, so Trolling. which is which is funny because here on YouTube, I've I've never been struck for something I've said, mm-hmm. but I have been told, oh, you can't use that clip of whatever because yeah. it's somebody else's. Even though I'm, we've been I, hit on with music stuff before, but yeah. not, not anything like oh, you can't say that, don't say that. It's, it's always been music clips. There you like go. That, so. Yeah, so that's I guess that's a plus for 2023 as opposed to 2032. But um, but yeah, just just the sheer cast. So mm-hmm. like I said, Wesley Snipes, Sylvester Stallone, uh, Dennis Leary, and yes. Sandra Bullock, and uh, uh, Rob Schneider. Man, yep. just it's it's just a one when it comes to all of the the people, and and even in the the smaller roles like like a Rob Schneider or a, or Benjamin Bratt. Man, mm-hmm. they they really uh, add something to. The, the story being told, which I'm, I'm a big fan of. Uh, you know, it could have been a totally different type of movie, too. Well, what do you mean? You know who was supposed to be played? John Spark? Who they had for oh, I know. I didn't know there was ever another option. Jean-Claude. Oh, okay. Wow. And Steven Seagal were both approached to play the, the two key parts. Wow. But no, neither one wanted to play the bad guy. Oh, okay. So okay. they both dropped out. Yeah. They brought Stallone in because he wanted to play. Of course. And then he had a different person in mind for... Um, uh, Simon Phoenix? Yeah. I, I mean, I can't env- envision anybody other than Wesley Snipes. Jackie Chan. No way. He wanted Jackie Chan to play. No, that would have been terrible. Yeah. Like, so, no no knock on Jackie Chan. Oh, I love Jackie Chan. Like, he's got great ability, but but Wesley Snipes, what he has is oh, he, he personality, man. Yeah. He, has, he has so much, uh, yeah, personality. I don't know what yeah, the better word. presence, yeah. Yeah, presence, my goodness. That's, yeah, oh my. He makes the movie. I would, yeah, like. Like, I think each piece is important, but he's the most important piece. Oh, yeah. Because what he does is uh, keeps the reality of his character from 96 to 32. And, oh, my goodness, yeah, I'll, I'm so glad you, you brought that yeah. that piece of yeah, you could information. Have had, you could have had Cena Seagal and Jean-Claude Van Damme <laughs> Good guy, bad guy. And neither one of them wanted to play the bad guy. So. Well, the, here, well, here's a funny thing. What if, I mean, I'm not trying to be rude when I say this, yeah. but what if you have Jean-Claude Van Damme and his accent yeah. versus Jackie Chan and his accent, <laughs> and, and everybody's just like, huh, what? what? Oh, Beach Boys! <laughs> what, 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 are we even, what, are we, what is even being said here? Oh, my goodness, that's you so need, funny. You need Chris Rock in there saying, do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Oh, man. Uh... I thought it was Chris Tucker. Tucker. I said Brock. I said Tucker. <laughs> it's okay. But yeah. Uh, man. That's another franchise that I love a lot is, uh, yeah. is the Rush, Rush Hour Hours. franchise. Yeah, yeah man. They, they do a lot of fun stuff there. Whew. But yeah, so like I, I took a bunch of notes. T- mm-hmm. Typically, well, the funny thing is, and you may have heard me say this on the channel before, but uh, anytime people are over, my notes become worthless. <laughs> Because it all just turns into conversation, yeah. Uh, which is the good part. Mm-hmm. But anytime I do a solo video, it's basically a script. I just right. read it because I have nobody to talk to. Right, <laughs> just talking to yourself. I, I know, know, right? Yeah. And and that that becomes challenging to to make it conversational. So I don't. I just mm-hmm. I just hit the notes exactly the way I did them. But um, yeah. So I, I personally feel like Stallone is a hit maker. Yes. Um. The entire Rocky franchise, and I know that he's not a fan of the continuation of his universe without him. Mm-hmm. But I love what they're doing. Yeah. So, <laughs> Creed son. 
Well, not just that, but there's rumors. Rumors might even be too loose of a word, but there's a there's an attempt to get Drago his own trilogy, oh, okay. and uh, Damien, the new the new villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, there's there's an attempt being made to get both of those the, the, the trilogy. Expanding the Rocky. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So to to make the mythos larger, and my reason for bringing that up is because I feel like this is a world with so much depth to it that it would be interesting to see what what would happen if they wanted to pop back in X number of years later Mm -hmm. because uh, especially given the the climax where right um, the the scraps are now on the surface Dennis Leary's crew and Benjamin Bratt joins them so I think that it would be an interesting idea to see what happened if we were to pop in, you know, thirty years later, right? Um, <laughs> to see what because I fallout from it was. Yeah, I think yeah. The, I think everybody's still alive, right? Should be, yeah. Yeah, I'm. My goodness, was uh, uh, Wesley Snipes' character? I mean, Phoenix, Simon Phoenix dies, but well, the, I meant yeah. like the actors themselves oh, yeah, are alive. Yeah. Um, yeah, the the character you're right is mm. is de- departed, but <laughs> do you know? One of my big pops, the things that always crack me up about the the final fight, is the introduction of uh, Jesse the Body Ventura. Yeah, I've been bringing that up. He's in there too. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that he has some of the best cameo work of the '90s. Whether it be a prison guard in yep. in Batman and Robin, or here as one of Wesley Snipes' boys, like he's just he's really good at being. That small role, because I've I've seen a few times when he tried to be the top guy, and he just yeah, he's bad, he's, bad. Not, he's not he's not as good as the the, the leading guy. He's just yeah. good as the extra character. Remember, he had a small part in Major League Two, also. He yeah, had, yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. Jesse, yeah, he's 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 a great cherry on top. Yeah, he's just not a good Sunday. <laughs> but not um, even close. yeah, the I don't think that I had. I don't think I had any explicit negatives about the film because, no. uh, again, with the the parallels between twenty three and thirty two, one of the big other parallels, not just with the the policing of speech. Now, granted, in twenty three it's via the internet, and in thirty two it's everywhere. Yeah, but one of the other interesting parallels was the uh, the the weak men. In the mm-hmm. in the the not quite dress but whatever kimono. Yeah. I was like, this is <laughs> entertaining slash interesting. The the prediction that seems to have come to pass with uh, the not lack of being so mainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With with lacking the uh, uh, tra- traditional masculinity. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just it's very. Surprising to me when, when media is able to to call their shot or call the shot of mm-hmm. something that seems to be, I don't know, definitely unexpected for me. I wouldn't have right. I wouldn't have thought when I was ten that that's how the world would be. Right. So I don't know. I, I don't. I just find it interesting that somebody thought, you know, what's going to happen in the future? Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Speaking of the future. And something that I would have never saw coming, the Franchise Wars. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I love the idea of a... Taco Bell winning out. Well, not just Taco Bell okay. winning out, but but a, a battle royale where where each <laughs> each franchise is in the tournament. I, I have no idea how you win, who makes the decisions, but it's, it's hilarious, the idea to think, oh, well, we've got to start with McDonald's versus Burger King, right? Right. And then uh, you know who's in the next bracket, and how do, how do we end up oh, with Chick Taco Bell on there? <laughs> yeah, Chick exactly. on that list. I, I would think so. Yeah, they would have to, right? As long as they ain't playing on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah, no Sunday game. Did boy. you know? Bring that up overseas. Um, it's not Taco Bell that wins. Out. No, I did not know it's that. Pizza Hut. That's cool. Because a lot of places don't have Taco Bell overseas. Right. So they, and then actually in the the um, dialogue they sub in. Pizza Hut over Taco Bell. So. so that's funny because uh, the the subbing in dialogue. Mm-hmm. Because it, it always cracks me up slash mildly irritates me when I hear them <laughs> sub out uh, 
things on TV, so oh, yeah. it's got to be interesting to hear it happening when it's not even a curse word. It's just a Pizza Hut over Taco Bell. Yeah. Oh, that'd be good. For dinner and dancing at Pizza Hut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and Spartan even sells it well, the mm-hmm. idea that um, this is, to him, not that big of an, an accomplishment. Oh, meet me at the Taco Bell or right. join me at the Taco Bell. And then when, when she explains that, oh, that it's the only restaurant that is around, it's like, ah, oh, that's that's another head-scratcher. Right. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm i a big fan of all... <laughs> I'm a big fan of all of the, the intrigue of the movie. Like, the idea that Spartan knows Phoenix so well that... Even though these cops of the, the the future age say, "Oh, all our technology is doing," he's like, "Well, I know exactly what he's doing. He's going for a gun." Right. And they're like, "Guns? The only place you can get that is a museum." <laughs> Guess where he's at? <laughs> the museum, exactly. Love it. It's so, yeah, it's just so well thought out on uh, all respects. Whether it's your first time here or you're a regular here at Mister Super Raz, I just want to thank you for tuning in. To the channel. It exists because I, Oz, from the channel Mr. Super Oz, I wrote a 68 page graphic novel called Everlasting Survivors. Volume 1 is called All Day Long. If you follow the link in the description of this video, you can get yourself hats, shirts, posters, all kinds of fun things. But most importantly, you can get the story itself. And the more people that pick up the story, the greater the chances are that there can be continued adventures with these heroes. Thank you. After that, open rolls. Enjoy the video. If you could, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Enjoy. And speaking of uh, well thought out, and subsequently also just the care that is given to the characters, I, I enjoy how... Spartan, when he first meets the Scraps, wants to fight these, uh, in his mind, anarchists or rebels, right up until the point he realizes they're stealing food. Yeah. Because the whole dynamic changes from the hero to what he perceives to be villains when he's like, oh, these guys aren't stealing to steal, and they're not doing they're bad to do bad. Family. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And that's that's the big eye-opening moment where it's like, wait, I'm I'm not even fighting on the right side, basically. Right. And, uh, and and also, he, ha- he uh, Spartan, is the only man... Pronouns, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Spartan is the only cop within the system that questions uh, Dr. Cocteau, mm-hmm. the, the, the guy who got us to... <laughs> I know, right? Uh, who got us to this this magical future, this special place of harmony, and it's to me to me it's it, it. Have you ever seen the Christian Bale movie Equilibrium? No. So in this, there's a dictator guy. I forget his name, but the the whole world is popping pills okay. because they're on a regimented system to to tamp down emotions. And in this and in that, and anything where you have a dystopian future, I feel like it is both common and accurate that the dictator themselves do not obey their dictates. Right. And I just think that that, it's a common trope because I think it's so accurate to the way that the the betters see themselves. Mm -hmm. And so anybody with the sense to write a good story will say, hey, those betters are lying to you because they're not actually better. Like, Cocteau's not good. He's just, uh, you know, power-seeking, in my view. He's pushing his vision. Absolutely. And his vision kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> the the whole, I'm, I'm top dog and I make all the decisions for people think. Uh, like, so not that I'm so pro-salt that, I, oh, we've got to have salt, but like, Salt's band, uh, anything that, like, music is gone away with, and now commercials are what's on the radio. Yeah. I don't know, like, hot dogs. I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> it's, 
it just it's it's smart because of how conceivable it is in the the way that oh uh, like there's no contact sports in the future either no contact sports exactly yes. oh my goodness and the worst thing that they can take away from you physical contact with, with another human being exactly yeah. like when 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 Spartan first comes out in the cop cop uniform the the new modern cop uniform uh, an older cop gives him a a, a recognition and he high fives him yeah and the and he then, didn't know how to take it yeah he can't he can't take the the physical touch because it's been barred you have to have a, a license and mm -hmm. and medical approval testing. and testing testing to yep. to even be able to create new humans and anytime you want to have a, a good physical time you've got to do it virtually in make-believe land and that is just that's no way to live. No. If, if if your entire uh, physical release comes from the internet, or in this case, a headset, but basically the internet, you know, you, you've got you got some uh, bad times coming. Yeah. I mean, I I know that it's they didn't even allow kissing. Except no kissing. My goodness. So Sandra Bullock's character, um, Huxley. Yes. So she she. She's enamored by the past. She loves Lethal Weapon, and she makes all kinds of uh, mixed metaphors on by mistake because she <laughs> she says, "Oh, we're gonna lick their ass," but yeah. she means kick yeah. uh, and other things of that nature. But take this job and shovel it. <laughs> shovel it. I mean, close <laughs> enough. That was. I think that was it. That was, yeah. that was one of the best ones. But um, she she gets a. Uh, I don't know if scared's the right word, but definitely apprehensive when mm -hmm. Spartan makes a move. And she's like, oh, it's outlawed. And then finally, at the conclusion of the film, he kisses her because they win. She's like, oh, are all bodily fluid exchanges that good? He's like, it's better. better, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, and so that was, uh, it, was, a, it, was a, a, it was just a smart conclusion to me to have the future character's eyes open to what they're missing out on. Actually, that... That explain. I mean, I know that this isn't... I assume the movie itself isn't meant to be uh, a commentary on giving up your rights. I assume not. But if, if it was meant to be that, it is an illustration of how that if you go generations without rights, whether it be right. speech or... Uh, protecting yourself or whatever the right is you're giving up, the next generation after, or a few generations after, they won't even miss it because they never ne never had it. You can't miss what you've never had, basically. Right. And so that's the important thing about Spartan's introduction to this world is he, he opens their eyes to how things not only could be but definitely should be when it comes to the things they've never had, which is which is why, to me... The movie is so good. Like, so I have a, a five-star rating system. Okay. Um, five is great, four is good, three is fine, two is passable, and then uh, one is, you know, it fails. Right. I also break the system, by the way, and I have a, a six <laughs> that's spectacular and a seven that's perfection, but almost nothing gets perfect. Um, and you can go below it, too. But, like, to me, the movie is, it's a very solid four out of five. Actually, I'm probably selling myself on it more just by thinking and engaging, but I'll stick with my original analysis and, and say that it's a good 4 out of 5 film, but um, it's, um, what is, what is your overall takeaway for, like, I love how it sets up and it tells the whole story from beginning to end as far as this was the downfall, this is where it mm -hmm. turned, they explained that there was an earthquake, yes. and disease and stuff came, and, well, and, and, and it's California, so I mean, you're, that's every five minutes you get an earthquake. Well, and, and also the earthquake is what uh, caused the death of Spartan's wife. Yes. Um, and I and I also find it intriguing that he's scared to reach out to his daughter. Yeah. Um, because he doesn't know how that she'll take it. Or, yeah, yeah, that and with this world they live in, it's like, mm -hmm. do I even fit in her life? There's a subplot in that part of it too. Yeah. She's part of the scraps. Oh. Yeah. 
When was that revealed? It wasn't. It's just it's a fan theory that. Oh well, I yeah, think that's I think that's a good fan theory. I'm. She, I'm, she was actually recorded. They 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 never made. Oh, so gotcha. It, it, but she's actually in one of the scenes that. That's beautiful. Towards the end, where uh, the scraps come up at the end. Yeah, no, that's great. And it's just a uh, plain Jane looking kind of. Oh, yeah, plain I like Jane that. Off to the left. That's so. smart. Yep. I kind of wish they would have gone yeah. into that. And again, that's one of the things that would be smart to reveal if they do end up doing a thirty years later. Mm-hmm release which i'm totally for yeah that, that movie hits about four four and a half for me i mean i think it's, it's a very good mid-90s action mm. comedy kind of movie yes and, and that's one thing that i loved about action movies at this time is that they really were good at bringing the humor yes <laughs> because sometimes and i don't even know when it began but sometimes there are action films that just take themselves so seriously it's like well you're you're doing you're you're making a movie but mm -hmm. i'm really not having fun with this right. you ever seen tango and cash sylvester stallone and kurt russell they're cops i haven't seen it i i that's I, a great comedy action movie yeah so i was gonna say i haven't seen it i know that somebody recommended it mm -hmm. at some point and i think i even got so far as to begin to put it on but then something came up and i i, I didn't watch it Part of it was, reform was uh, filmed at the Reformatory in Mansfield. Oh, really? Yes. That's really cool. So, that is a is that, is that, it, that's not the place Shawshank was done. Yes. Right? Oh, it is? Okay. Yes. I couldn't remember. Uh, yep, same place. And now they do concerts there, question mark? Yep. Yeah, okay. I thought so. And tattoo conventions, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, just so, yeah. oddball yep. <laughs> get-togethers. <laughs> no, that's that's fun. Yeah, that quintessential 90s action comedy is what this is all based off of. Yeah. I love... Oh, definitely, yeah. So, I, like I said, I, I like Kurt Russell, and I love Sylvester Stallone, mm -hmm. so I it, I can't remember what it was that got in the way of me watching the film, but I know that I had it on... I began to start pushing play one day, and then something got in the way. But, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely have to check it out. Yeah. Especially given... Um, so, Tony had said that he wanted to, to play the game, too, at okay. some point. Mm -hmm. And I assume his tastes are very similar to yours mm -hmm. in timelines slash genre. Yeah. And so... Uh, that it, might be a good one for it, Definitely. A, it's definitely a possibility. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, this only got added to the review list because it just kept coming up in conversation <laughs> on the channel. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate you coming, sir. No problem. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, this was, this was a, lot of, a lot of fun, and it's great to... You know, just have new perspectives. If you want to do this on a semi-regular, you know, you're more than know. welcome. Anytime. I'll Sweet. Appreciate it. Thank you. Th thank you for watching. And, uh, yeah, come back tomorrow for trivia, Thursday trivia, and uh, another long-form video on Friday. Later.